GMAW gas metal arc welding red flags. Gary Pace, PECWI. So in this one, we're going to kind of go down a rabbit hole. Um, gets back to everybody looks at wire feed and thinks, oh, it's all the same universe. Everything's the same process. But as you dig deeper into the codes, ASME Section 9, there's some caveats in there in regards to use of gas metal arc welding short circuiting. And there's also some in AWS D1.1. And we're going to kind of try and address those and maybe sort out some of the information and get people steered in the right direction in regards to um, some of the GMAW short circuiting red flags and what you can run across in the codes. So the it's not the whole GMAW process that's a red flag. It's the GMAW short circuiting process that's a red flag, especially when you start dealing with codes such as ASME Section 9 and AWS D1.1. They've got special provisions in these codes when you use these welding processes and you kind of got to know what you're looking for and where to find these um, little caveats, nuances, and provisions so that you don't get yourself in trouble when you're qualifying a welding procedure. And that's where we're going. Here's our good friend ASME Section 9. If we dive into Article 2, Welding Procedure Qualifications, we're going to find some of these caveats located in a table called QW255. So this is QW255. Without getting too bogged down in welding procedure qualifications, PQRs and all that, I've got other videos that you can watch or put yourself to sleep with watching those things but this is our list of essential supplementary essential and non-essential variables that we're going to use when we qualify a welding procedure for ASME section 9 and this is QW255 well you can see I've highlighted three separate paragraphs on here that flag us for short circuiting we've got QW40310 which is thickness limits We've got QW40432, which is also um, thickness limits for filler metals and the deposited um, filler metal thickness. And we've got QW4092, which is the transfer mode. So we're going to kind of dissect these and get into this and um, go from there, see where everything turns out. Okay, so from as uh, I'm going to kind of do this in reverse order. So for ASME Section 9, if you look at QW409.2, a change from globular spray or pulse spray transfer welding to short circuiting and short circuiting transfer welding or vice versa. So this is basically laying out that short circuiting transfer is considered a separate welding process. Even though it will use the same weld materials, the same gases, I could use all the same everything, but if I change the transfer mode from globular spray or pulse spray into short circuiting, it's a different process. I can have everything the same except the transfer mode, which is the amount of electricity that's getting put into the metal and vice versa. I could qualify a weld procedure with the low energy short circuiting process and the minute I kick things up into globular spray or pulse spray I have crossed the border there and I'm now in another welding process. So this is something that you got to keep track of also when you're talking to welders or you're out on the shop floor make sure that you understand the welding processes and the um, how the um, transfer modes work between the, the, the different transfer processes. When we're using GMAW short circuiting, we got a, and we're qualifying to ASME section nine, here's one that's gonna come into play, QW404.32. For the low voltage short circuiting type of gas metal arc process, when the deposited weld metal thickness is less than half an inch, 
an increase in deposited weld metal thickness beyond 1.1 times that of the qualification test deposited for weld metal thickness. So anything under a less than a half an inch is 1.1 times. So if I use a 3 8 inch qualification test, I can weld in production with 1.1 times that, which would be 0.4125 inches of thickness. If I go over half an inch of thickness and greater, then I get kicked over to table QW451, 451.2, or 451.2.1a as applicable. So if you're with globular spray or pulse spray, you're going to get 2T. So if you qualify on 3 8 you're going to get up to 3 quarters. This is different than with 3 8 than anything less than a half that you would have with short circuiting. So the code addresses this short circuiting as being a completely different mode of transfer and it's pretty much considered a different welding process than globular spray or pulse spray and the code addresses this by the thickness qualifications. 403.10 for the short circuiting transfer mode of gas metal arc welding process when the qualification test coupon thickness is less than half an inch an increase in thickness beyond 1.1 times that of the qualification test coupon for thickness is one and a half or half inch, 13 millimeters or greater, use tables QW451.1 or QW451.2 as applicable. Okay, QW403.1. For short circuiting transfer mode of gas metal arc welding, when qualification thickness is less than half an inch, an increase by the thickness beyond 1.1 times of the test coupon. So you only get 1.1 times the test coupon. For thicknesses greater than a half an inch, then you're, you're, it's a different provision. But you can see here that the other processes are going to give you um, note one, and or the other ones are going to give you 2T. So if you qualify on you know, a quarter of an inch with spray or globular, you're going to get half an inch you're going to get 2t whereas with this you'd get 0 .1, 1, 1 1.1 times the thickness qualified which would take you from 0 0.25 to 0 0.275 so that's what this is telling us on um, this uh, thickness limit for procedure qualifications qw 451.1 With performance qualification testing, people testing, welder testing, most of the time we use a test plate and then we do some bend tests on it. You know, you cut out some bend tests. This is what a sample, I don't know where I pulled this one from, but military or from a ODOT or somebody. Um, but anyways, you cut the face in a root bend and then you bend it and it tells you if the material has the ductility that you're looking for and this is pretty much the the general mode for welder qualification but sometimes you can use radiography except for the special requirements of QW380 each welder who welds under the rules of the code shall have passed a mechanical and visual examinations prescribed in 302.1 and 302.4 respectively Alternatively, welders may be qualified by volumetric NDE per QW191 when making special groove weld when making a groove weld using shielded metal arc welding, submerged arc welding, gas tungsten arc welding, pulsed arc welding, and gas metal arc welding, except for short circuiting mode for radiographic examination. So this precludes you from using radiographic examination for gas metal arc welding short circuiting mode of transfer. So here's one of those ones, those little red flags and the nuances in ASME section 9 that you need to um, keep track of. 
Gas metal arc welding short circuiting has a colder, smaller weld puddle which allows it to be run in positions other than the flat position such as um, vertical uphill, 3G, vertical up, or overhead or in the horizontal positions. A lot of the other, the other transfer modes don't give you such um, variability or the ability to run the weld passes in out of position um, situations. So that's one of the main things that is different about gas metal arc welding and the short circuiting mode of transfer than the other pro the other modes such as globular and pulse spray and spray. Okay, we're going to talk we're going to dive into D11 and some of the little nuances that are in AWS D1.1 where they point out gas metal arc welding, short circuiting and say, "Hey, this process is completely different from all the other from the other transfer modes and needs to have a special set of rules around short circuiting mode of transfer. AWS D1.1 Clause 5 Pre qualified WPS is Part D Welding Processes. Pre qualified processes, SMAW, uh, submerged arc welding, gas metal arc welding, except GMAWS, which is short circuiting, and FCAW WPSs which conform to all the provisions of Clause 5 shall be deemed as pre-qualified and are therefore approved for use without performing WPS qualification tests for the process. This is telling us that we can use stick welding, submerged arc welding, gas metal arc welding, flux cord arc welding for pre-qualified WPSs. But it says no way, this is not, you cannot use this transfer mode for gas metal arc welding short circuiting not enough penetration, um, cold lap, incomplete fusion, all kinds of issues arise from this. So the code committee years ago said, nope, GMAW short circuiting is its own process. You can use GMAW short circuiting, but you have to qualify it. You have to do a bend test. You have to do um, all the mechanical testing that's required to to qualify the procedure using that mode of transfer in gas metal arc welding. It can be done, but you have to qualify the procedure. And as I stated in a previous slide, it's considered, short circuiting is considered a separate welding process, even though it uses the same gases, the same wires, the same equipment, it's the voltage and the current that goes into short circuiting mode of transfer makes it a completely different animal so to say than globular spray and pulse spray. 615 welding processes requiring qualification. This kind of piggybacks off the the other one but here we go into clause 6 which is the qualification of welding procedures. So you can use short circuiting mode of transfer with in AWS D1.1, the structural code, you just have to qualify the welding procedure in conformance with Clause 6. So y you need to prepare a WPS and qualify each WPS, but all you can do it, but it has to be qualified if you're using GMAW short circuiting. So here's another table where we got a red flag. You can see I got it sort of highlighted. Um, so if you qualify welders to gas metal arc welding spray, your welders aren't qualified for short circuiting because it's considered a separate process. It's considered a separate process for welder qualification, which is performance qualification and also procedure qualification. There's all kinds of these little caveats with GMAWS. So anytime you see that, you need to kind of tread lightly. 617.1.1, substitution of RT for guided bend tests. Except for joints welded by GMAWS, radiographic examination of a welder or welding operator qualification test plate or test pipe may be made in lieu of bend tests described in 617. 
So you can use, for if you're going to stick weld or you're going to do spray transfer or you're going to use TIG welding or you're going to use any other welding process, you can use radiography to qualify your welders. Do a test plate, um, shoot an x-ray on it, move on. Well, the thing is, with gas metal arc welding short circuiting, you can put in a beautiful weld with that's absolutely wonderful and it'll pass the x-ray but it'll snap like a dry twig in August. Um, I've seen it happen where the root and the face will just snap. You'll just have, it'll just break, just like breaking a broomstick over your knee. And that's why the AWS D1.1 committee years ago said, all right, you can qualify anybody else using the other processes except gas metal arc welding short circuiting. You cannot use radiography with that. So once again, another one of these red flags and one of the nuances of the code where it shows that ga gas metal arc welding short circuiting mode of transfer is a different process than globular spray and pulse spray. Our big fear with this welding process is, or this mode of transfer, is that we're going to get lack of fusion. We're not going to, it's not going to tie into the base metal. And once again, until you've seen this happen, you're like, how can that happen? Um, but it does. And you'll see this a lot with, or not a lot, but it can happen with people welding, you know, farm equipment or whatever they're welding and making a repair, and they're using their little MIG welder in the garage, and they put in a beautiful weld and it breaks. It's because you didn't tie in. There's not enough heat to really burn into the base material. And there's some tricks and some ways around this where you can preheat it and whatnot, but I'm not going to get into that here and now. But gas metal arc welding short circuiting, the big red flag is you're looking at lack of fusion and it's not going to tie into the base metal. So some things to look for for short arc, for the short arc mode of transfer. Um, check the shielding gas mixture. You're going to need a minimum of 80% argon for spray transfer and anything less than that you can have globular or um, short circuiting. 17 to 22 volts is generally short circuiting gas metal arc welding um, mode of transfer. Much above that you're into globular. Voltages above 25 usually indicate true globular arc or a spray arc mode if you have the right shielding gas. The ability of gas metal arc welding short circuiting to produce welds out of position. So if you've got a welder out there in the shop and they're welding out of position, if they're welding uphill or overhead and they're supposed to be using a spray transfer, then they're, they're not running within the parameters and they're using the wrong welding process because gas metal arc welding short circuiting is a separate process. And the ability to weld with open root groove weld without the use of backing. So if they're in there using that, then you know something's wrong if they're supposed to be using spray or globular. So these are just some things to look at that'll tip you off as to whether or not short arc is being used in a situation where it probably shouldn't be. Okay, summary. We touched base on a lot of information in regards to gas metal arc welding short circuiting transfer mode and trying to understand some of the red flags and some of the nuance associated with this mode of transfer.